the narcissist's obsession with you never fades. You rejected the narcissist and you went no contact. But that doesn't mean that it's all over. Because when you reject a narcissist that causes a narcissistic injury, an emotional trauma that overwhelms their defense mechanisms and devastates their pride and self-worth, because they feel like their self-image has been criticized, slighted or insulted after you challenge their inflated sense of superiority, specialness or entitlement. They become obsessed because they can't hook you. They can't attract or hold your attention. And it's not because they're attracted to you. Narcissists lack empathy. So they don't have the capacity to be attracted to a person because of their character or personality. They're fixated on you because they can't love bomb you. They can't get you hooked. And this may be something that they've never experienced before. Because as we know, narcissists are often charming and charismatic. They're the life of the party. So they might not be used to being rejected. They usually always get their way. They get the pick of the litter. So when you stay resilient and you're quick to bounce back and recover, they see you as a project that they're determined to complete. But it's not because they're attracted to who you are as a person. They're just obsessed with getting your attention so that their fragile ego and their false image of themselves is maintained. They become preoccupied and immersed in thoughts about you. They become fixated on you until at some point they have no choice but to stalk you because you don't want anything to do with them. You're not interested. You have no participation or involvement. So they have to go the extra mile. They have to make a special effort. Which may not make any sense to you. Because you've already made it very clear that you're not interested in them. But this is all going on in their minds. Where they have decided to make something unimportant. Applicable and relevant to you when it is not relevant, suitable or appropriate to you. It's not something that you desire to be involved in, but they are deeply invested in you. And they have taken the time and made a conscious effort to be preoccupied with you and to develop an obsessive attachment to you when you wouldn't normally have anything to do with them. Because they usually wouldn't even have the opportunity or possibility to deal with you. You're outside of the range of their perception and understanding to which they should be concerned with. So they've had to zone in on you. They've had to focus and concentrate on something that would not normally be relevant or appropriate to them for them to be able to continue with their toxic behavior. They may come up with justifications for why they're doing what they're doing, but their reasons are invalid they're not true or acceptable because it never lines up with their actions or behaviors. So they're experiencing psychosis, an unshakable delusion where they have lost contact with reality because they're perceiving and interpreting reality in a very different way. They believe in things that are not actually true. Every stalker has a mental illness. They're suffering from mental and emotional problems to where they may be exhibiting an emotional disturbance or agitation, a state of anxiety and nervous excitement. They're really excited about stalking you 
but at the same time they may feel nervous about how might things turn out, so it gives them a thrill. It's like an emotional roller coaster. It alternates between making them feel excited and happy, and making them feel sad, disappointed or desperate. It's like a slot machine, a gamble, where they take risky action in the hope of a desired result. So it's addictive, it causes dependency, it's like a drug. They're junkies because they're unable to stop doing it and the more they do it the more they want more of it. They become even more obsessed. It begins to escalate, it becomes normalized, but it's just never enough. They're never satisfied, they can't leave things alone. Because they've come up with these ideas in their mind. They have these reasons for why they do what they do. So just like many addicts or alcoholics, they don't even realize that they have a problem. They don't even see the harm that it's doing to them. Because they're out of their mind, they've lost control of their mental faculties to where they may seem very mad or very foolish, where it's almost like they're possessed like they're completely controlled by an evil spirit because it doesn't make any sense it's not producing good or helpful results it's not promoting their well-being and yet they're investing so much of their time into something outside of them when it doesn't serve any purpose they've just developed this unhealthy and compulsive preoccupation on you these ideas that preoccupy their mind and hold their attention and a very strong interest in you to where it's turned into an obsession an excessive enthusiasm and desire marked by great excitement, euphoria, delusions and overactivity and they may even align themselves with many other connections so that they can try to be wherever you are whether it's on social media or in person. They may have implanted spyware on your computer or phone. They may have placed a tracking device on your car. And they may even be monitoring you through spy cameras in your home. Or they may even have connections in certain establishments to where they're able to monitor you wherever you go. There's really no depth that a narcissistic stalker won't go to. They might swim to the bottom of the ocean if they believe that you are there because they can't rest. They need to have influence and control over you. They need to be aware of information or of what is conveyed or represented by a particular arrangement or sequence because their mental illness is drawing them to it. They share all of the same traits as of a narcissist and also histrionic personality disorder because the center of interest and activity always seems to involve the psychological aspects of their sexual impulse to where they experience the sudden strong and unreflected urge and desire to act and it's what seems to be their driving and motivating force because they're highly dramatic and approval seeking they show a desire to be the center of attention they engage in dramatic attention seeking behavior but then they also prefer to operate behind the scenes they're covert, they prefer to remain hidden, which is usually the result of the target rejecting them, because otherwise there's no reason for them to hide. If their behavior is tolerated and accepted, but then they may also display resistance, as though they're not interested in you, because they're voyeuristic, so it's only when they think you're not looking that they will gain sexual pleasure from watching and observing you and it may even be in sexual situations if they have the opportunity but they may also derive enjoyment from seeing you in pain and distress because many of them are sadists and sometimes it can be a mixture of both they can be sadomasochistic where they derive sexual pleasure from the infliction of physical and psychological pain and humiliation whether it's on you or at times even on themselves and they engage in discipline, dominance and submission which are all tendencies resulting from childhood abuse especially when they are acting on a person without their consent 
or if the individual enjoys creating discomfort or interpersonal issues. But this is what they like to do. They like to remain hidden while they are causing trouble and harm. But sometimes they can be overt as well because they like to leave intentional hints that they are stalking you to show you that they are there because they're just very sick, crazy people. They're completely unable to think clearly or behave in a controlled way. They're demented and balanced and unhinged, which is why stalking is a very serious criminal offense in every country in the world. It's typically those who are unemployed who engage in stalking or people who don't have enough paid work or they're not doing work that makes full use of their skills or abilities so they have nothing else better to do they lack discipline and planned activities they have too much free time so they're getting into trouble and doing weird and unnecessary things they're unproductive they're not achieving anything So they have all of this time to invest into things that are not benefiting them because they just don't have a life. They don't have interests or activities which make their life enjoyable and worthwhile. They're not doing anything productive. They don't have a meaningful purpose. Their life is not satisfying to them. It's not fulfilling their desires, expectations or needs. And they've already experienced so many disappointments they're full of resentment, bitterness and regret. And they direct these feelings of dissatisfaction, disturbance and agitation onto other things that they hate because they have nothing else better to do. They're not working on themselves. If they put that same amount of energy and interest into their own lives and they had the things that they wanted and needed out of life they wouldn't be stalking you. They would be too busy and preoccupied with other things. So stalkers are failures. They're people who are unsuccessful at life. They're losers. Which is why they're so delusional. Because their reality is not how they want it to be. And they don't know how to create or manifest the things that they desire. So they form this crazy system of ideas and ideals in their minds. And then their campaign of stalking begins. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.